Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillah, all praise is indeed due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Was salatu was salamu ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, his companions. May Allah bless them all. May Allah bless every one of us and may Allah bless humanity at large. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us mercy in this beautiful month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are granted freedom from hellfire and entry into Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, it is absolutely important for us to realize that this month of Ramadan is a month wherein the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends onto the earth. And every single person is granted the mercy of Allah if he or she would like to achieve that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this month of Ramadan is a month wherein every night there are names of people who are granted freedom from hellfire. So make your name from among those names by seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are to ask Allah protection from hellfire thrice every day, hellfire itself asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from it. So it is amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us such a favor. If we were to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jannatul Firdaus, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah. Oh Allah, I ask you jannah. If you repeat that three times every day, then Jannah itself asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you Jannah. So you'd better say, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-Jannah. My beloved brothers and sisters, we are going to be speaking for the next hour about the deeds that we need to do in order to get paradise. We know that we would like goodness in this world and the next. The dua that we are taught in the Quran. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirati hasana wa qina adaban nar. O our Rabb, grant us goodness in this world and grant us goodness in the next and save us from the fire or the punishment of the fire. That's a dua. It goes to show that what is important for you and I, we want a decent life on earth. And on top of that, we would like a decent death and we would like that which is good in the hereafter. We also would like to be saved from the punishment in the grave, from the punishment of the hellfire. So we ask this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he taught us some simple things to do to earn Jannatul Firdaus. Remember my brothers and sisters, Jannatul Firdaus is the paradise that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He owns it and he will decide what deeds you will do that will deserve entry into Jannah. But ultimately, it is his mercy, Rahmatullahi Azza wa Jal, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will actually make us enter into Jannatul Firdaus. This evening, mashallah, we fulfilled beautiful Salat al Taraweeh. How do I know? that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted it. I hope in his mercy because I tried my best, right? Sometimes the concentration span is not 100%. Sometimes we could have done better. Sometimes we have a small distraction. Yet this is salah for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, your duty is to try your best. Then you ask Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ O our Rabb, accept it from us for indeed you are all hearing, you are all knowledgeable. So my beloved brothers and sisters, the first reason or the first point that we would need to have within us in order to earn Jannatul Firdaus is Al-Imanu Billah, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person who does not believe in the hereafter, what do they want? There are people who believe that this is just the world. They 
They said, the kuffar of Quraysh, they used to say, it is only this worldly life. We are dying and we will be alive. And that's it. There is nothing more than death and life. Nothing in the hereafter. For them, can they expect Jannah? Can they expect paradise when they did not believe in it? So to expect Jannah to Firdaus, we need to believe that after death, there is something indeed I will be taken account of. Al-Hisab, everything is going to be taken account of. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always tells us two things are needed from us. Not only Iman, but together with Iman, there is something known as Al-Amalus Salih, which means good deeds. Every time Allah says, Indeed, those who believe and do good deeds. For them, they will be the, the dwellers of Jannah or of paradise. So remember, my brothers and sisters, it's not enough for us to say, I'm a believer, and you stop there without doing anything. You still need to do good deeds. And what are these good deeds? They are the good deeds that were taught to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who really believe and do good deeds. Secondly, what we need to realize is the consciousness of Allah. We need to be conscious of Allah at all times. Whatever you do, remember, you are answerable to Allah. Allah is watching. There is a record being taken. Remember that. Now we are in the month of Ramadan. Did you know that the verse that makes the fasting prescribed actually has at the end of it the reason of the prescription of fasting? You may have heard this so many times. Let's read the verse, Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala alladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you in the same way it was prescribed upon those before you in order that you achieve taqwa. Taqwa is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are conscious of Allah, you are aware of what goes into your mouth, you are aware of what comes out of your mouth, you are aware of your actions, your deeds, your words, your movements, you are aware of everything because you are conscious of Allah. So let's learn to develop this as well. The fasting month is a beautiful month whereby we can develop these beautiful qualities for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is also absolutely important, my brothers and sisters, something that is a gift of Allah. Do you know what it is? Something known as a tawbah, repentance, the seeking of forgiveness and the forgiveness of Allah. It is a gift. When I make a mistake, imagine if Allah did not forgive, what would happen? We would be doomed because every one of us makes mistakes. Kullu bani Adam khatta. All the children of Adam, they make many mistakes. The term khatta in the Arabic language refers to one who makes so many mistakes, not just one. But the hadith says, Wa khayrul khatta'in at-tawwabun. The best from among those who makes mistakes is he or she who constantly repents to Allah. So seek Allah's forgiveness. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? He says, in fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he speaks about tawbah, he says, you know, he speaks about the punishment of Allah and then he makes an exception. And he says, That is a verse of Surah Maryam. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the punishment and then he says the exception, which means those who will not be punished are those who ask Allah's forgiveness and they do good deeds thereafter. Allah says they will be granted entry into Jannatul Firdaus. In fact, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also speaks about those who have committed immorality. They did something wrong. They committed adultery, fornication. They were engaged in immoral behavior. Allah says, if they reflect immediately and they repent immediately and they turn to Allah, Allah says, we will forgive them. And if they change their ways, they will be the ones who will enter Jannatul Firdaus. It means my brothers and sisters, Jannah will be filled with people who made mistakes but sought the forgiveness of Allah. 
subhanahu wa ta'ala because all of us are prone to making errors so it is not like any one of us is absolutely perfect if you want jannah don't lose hope there is still a chance of you to go to jannah and for me too by doing what turn to allah ask him to forgive you if allah forgives you you are the one who will enter jannatul firdaus and this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised us another quick way of making your path to jannah very easy is in the hadith of abu huraira radiallahu anhu which is reported in sahih muslim where the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says man salaka tariqan yaltamisu fihi ilman sahala allahu lahu bihi tariqan ila al jannah whosoever treads a path to seek knowledge allah makes through that effort of his the path of entry into jannah easy for him tonight we've come here to do what to learn something i pray that allah accept it from us we want to be motivated we want to feel good about our islam and iman we want to come close to allah we want to change our ways and habits we want to listen to a lecture that will inshallah educate us we want some knowledge so therefore my brothers and sisters it is important for you to know that this effort you have made is considered by allah it is written down by the angels they know and allah knows and allah says because of this effort he makes your path to jannah very easy now you might want to know how very simple when you come your heart is softened you start asking allah's forgiveness you promise allah to read salah you promise allah to change your ways and your habits as a result your path to jannah is made easy this is why seek knowledge make an effort to go make an effort to attend attend the lectures and the lessons of the ulama make sure that you are there because i promise you the mercy of allah descends upon a gathering such as this in the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is amazing how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us favor upon favor he wants to give us jannah this is why the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says kullukum tadkhuluna al jannata illa man aba قيل ومن يأبى يا رسول الله قال من أطاعني دخل الجنة ومن عصاني فقد أبى. Every one of you will enter Jannah. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says, besides he who refuses to enter paradise. So the Sahaba said, who would refuse to enter paradise? So he said, whoever follows me will enter Jannah. Whoever does not follow me has refused. They have refused to enter Jannah to Firdaus. So this is something that is absolutely important. This is a way to enter Jannatul Firdaus by seeking knowledge. Another way of entering Jannatul Firdaus, my brothers and sisters, is hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man salla al-bardayn dakhal al-jannah. What that means is, whoever makes sure that they read Salatul Fajr and Salatul Asr, they will enter Jannah. That does not mean there are two salahs for a Muslim. You know, you cannot take the hadith and say, right, I heard the hadith tonight. I'm going to read two salah out of five. That means I will go to Jannah. No, because those salah are quite difficult because people are sleeping early morning. And you know how difficult it is to get up for Salatul Fajr. Go to the masjid. The smallest crowd is for Fajr. Salatul Asr. Why? In the afternoon, people have a siesta. People like to sleep. People have a little bit of what is known as qailula. They want to rest. They feel lazy to get up for Salatul Asr. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm not going to go. The hadith says, if you can forsake your bedding and get into the masjid or fulfill your salah, for you is Jannah. Man salla al-bardayn, dakhal al-jannah. Look at how simple the hadith words it. Whoever makes sure they read these two, that when they are most difficult, it means the other three will be easier for them. If you do that, which is very hard, you know, when you have a mathematics examination, and you answer the very difficult questions for you one plus one is nothing they don't even need to ask you subhanallah because you have answered extremely difficult questions the same would apply if you are doing that which is hard for you to do that which is simple and easy is actually a given may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us jannatul firdaus similarly another very important uh, quality a person who fulfills hajj when it is compulsory upon him or her to fulfill hajj obviously we need to follow the rules and the laws you know you don't just break the rules and laws and fulfill the hajj against the rules but 
you fulfilled the rules, regulations, and you have made sure that you did your hajj, you need to know that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again in a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anh, he says, Al-umratu ila al-umrati kaffaratu lima baynahuma, wal hajjul mabrur laysa lahu jazaun illa al-jannah. One umrah between it and the next umrah that you make will expiate the sins between the two umrahs. You will achieve forgiveness. So make umrah in abundance if you can, because you will achieve forgiveness of the sins between the two. But when you fulfill your hajj, the reward of an accepted hajj is only Jannah. It is nothing besides Jannah al Firdaus. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Raja'a kayawmi waladathu ummuhu. A person comes back from hajj similar to the day or as clean as the day that his mother gave birth to him. May Allah make it easy for us to go for hajj. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to thank him. I mean, brothers and sisters, another special way of entering Jannatul Firdaus is to fast often for the sake of Allah. Fasting is not only in the month of Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, it is compulsory. Whoever witnesses the month of Ramadan should fast. That's the instruction of Allah in Surah Al-Baqarah. But we need to know something. There are voluntary fasts. Just like Salah, there is Farad, there is Sunnah, there is Nafil. The same applies to Zakah. There is that which is Farad, compulsory, and that which is Nafila. You can give Sadaqat. You can do good deeds for the sake of Allah. The same applies when it comes to the issue of fasting. You fast during the month of Ramadan. The hadith says, Man saama Ramadana thumma atba'ahu sittam min shawwal kana kasiyam al-dahr. And you know that is because لِأَنَّ الْحَسَنَةَ بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا Whoever fasts Ramadan and follows it through with fasting six days of the next month which is known as Shawwal, they do not have to be consecutive. They can be separated, no problem. Allah says you will have the reward of having fasted the entire year because your good deed is multiplied by 10. One month of Ramadan multiplied by 10, you got 10 months. The six days multiplied by 10, you got 60 days. 60 days is two months. 10 months plus two months is one whole year. You have the reward of the whole year. But there is another sunnah fast three days every lunar month. 13th, 14th, and 15th. They are known as ayyamul bil. You fast those three days, you have the reward of having fasted the entire month because three by 10 is 30. Then two days a week, Monday and Thursday, sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa I promise you, my brothers and sisters, if you try to achieve this, you will earn Jannah, not any ordinary Jannah, through a special door known as Ar-Rayyan. Ar it is a door known as Ar-Rayyan only for those who are fasting for the sake of Allah. And this fasting is done because it disciplines you. When you are fasting, what immorality are you going to do? What sins are you going to do? What salah are you going to miss? You have so much spare time. Lunch time, you don't need to worry about your salah. There is no lunch for you. You go for salah, subhanallah. It increases your closeness to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will enter Jannah from a special door. Brothers and sisters, today, to lose weight, we are ready to fast. Unfortunately, some people gain weight in the month of Ramadan. You know that? Because what happens is when they get to iftar, they think they are doing qada for what they have missed. And they eat and eat and they eat after taraweeh and they eat again and again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us realize that Ramadan, yes, it is a month of goodness and happiness, but it is a month of discipline. We need to discipline ourselves. So if you can discipline yourself in Ramadan, inshallah, outside the month of Ramadan, you will achieve lots of goodness and the doors of Jannah will be opened wide. On the last day of Ramadan, it is known as Laylatul Ja'izah. Once the moon is sighted, the prize giving comes out. And the hadith says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he boasts to the angels about us, that do you know what is the reward of my worshiper who stayed away from his food and his drink and his desires only for me? Subhanallah. So the angels, obviously, they are waiting for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And he says, I make you, O oh angels, bear witness that I have forgiven them. Subhanallah. That is the eve of Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us deserving of Eid. 
if you have fasted and if you have stood in taraweeh, you deserve a day of happiness. That day of happiness is to earn the pleasure of Allah. It is not a day of sin. Some people, the alcohol comes out on the day of Eid. The haram comes out on the day of Eid. The clothing, everything that they were wearing correctly, it all goes back into the cupboard and all the nakedness comes out on the day of Eid. That's not what Eid is all about. Eid is a day of happiness to make Allah happy, not to make shaitan happy. Allah gave you the whole month of goodness. Now I want you to promise yourself and to promise Allah this Eid, we will not do anything to displease Allah. We will only do that to please Allah. Get up in the morning and you obey Allah. Read some nafila, read some Quran. Mashallah, this is the month of the Quran. It does not mean, Mashallah, was the moon sighted? Yes, it was. Okay, close the Quran. That's not what Eid is. If the moon was sighted, we need to read more of the Quran. Because now Allah has given us the gift. <laughs> Amazing. So my beloved brothers and sisters, that is one of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding Siyam. Another very important hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is the hadith of Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu anhu. He says, once I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with a bit of water for his wudu. And with that water, he, he told me, sell, which means ask, ask what you want. Subhanallah. Imagine Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, ask, what do you want? What would you say? You know what he says? As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah. He says, I ask you for your companionship in Jannah. Wow, wow, Allahu Akbar. Look at how beautiful. I think our children would ask for an iPhone. They would ask for something else. They might ask for a Lamborghini. You know, what do you ask? Subhanallah. But he says, As'aluka murafaqataka fil Jannah. I ask you your companionship in Jannah to Firdaus. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, help yourself to achieve that by kathratus sujood, by prostrating a lot. Help yourself. You can get it. Any one of us can get murafaqatun nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are not sahaba. We are not companions in the dunya. But that does not negate the fact that we can be companions in the hereafter. Don't you know that? How? By following his sunnah, following his path, and by ensuring that we fulfill our salah. Now, if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you help yourself to achieve this by engaging in prostration a lot, it means your salah is in order. But over and above that, make sure that you find yourself in prostration. My brothers, my sisters, when we fulfill our five daily salah, I request you to think about the time that you spend in the most powerful position you can ever be in. And that is sujood. Aqrabu ma yakunu l'abdu li rabbihi wa huwa sajid. The closest that a slave can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the condition of sajda i want you to ask yourself what is your relationship with sajda ask yourself how long do you take in the most powerful position and improve it please improve it for the sake of allah there is no better place that you could actually put your head on than the ground for allah it is the closest you can get to allah please take your time think about it from today the lesson is for me, inshallah, an encouragement for myself and for every one of you to say, please take more time in sujood because you don't know when next you will be able to prostrate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns those who don't want to go into sujood that on the day of judgment, when they will be called to make sujood to Allah, they won't be able to in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. Then we have another very, very important way of entering Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has so many names, so many names, way beyond 120, 140. In fact, we don't know the exact number of names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. He has beautiful names. But there are 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you were to memorize 99 of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know them, you memorize them, you understood them, you live by them, you use them to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, whoever does that, dakhal al-jannah. They will be granted entry into jannah because they have recognized Allah. Allah is ar-Rahman, the most merciful. Ar-Rahim, the most merciful. Subhanallah. What other names? They are Al-Ghaffar. So many names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have we ever understood them? 
many of us we might have a little YouTube clip play or a clip on our phones sometimes a ringtone Ya man hu wallahu alladhi la ilaha illa hu and I'm sure you know what I'm talking about with the names of Allah and we hear them and sometimes we know a few of them but have you ever sat and thought about the meanings of these names do you know what exactly they entail if you make a small effort Allah says inna lillahi ta'ala this is in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it's a hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu in Sahih al-Bukhari he says Allah has 99 names which if you were to memorize you would get Jannah Man ahsaha aw hafidhaha dakhal al Jannah Whoever memorizes them and has encompassed them will be granted Jannah This does not only mean to know them off by heart but you are living in the nightclubs or you are living in Haram No, you need to know them and try your best to live by them Remember this evening the key word is try Try your best Keep trying. Don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. No matter what you have done, one of the ways of earning Jannah, I told you, is seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا Oh Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tell my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves, who have committed sin against themselves, never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Allah will forgive all of your sins for indeed he is most forgiving, most merciful. This verse proves that anyone who loses hope in Allah is insulting Allah. When Allah told you don't lose hope and you are losing hope, you are telling him I know better than you. Astaghfirullah. Don't ever do that. Don't allow the devil to make you think that you are hopeless. No, you can never be hopeless no matter what. Allah loves you. That is the reason why you will hear good words. You will feel motivated. You will feel the closeness to Allah. Seek Allah's protection from the devil and Allah will grant you that protection. But you've got to keep trying. T-R-Y. Keep trying, my brothers and sisters. No point in saying, Oh Allah, help me to stay away from shaitan while you are going to steal, while you are going to deceive and cheat. On the way, you know, the thief, on the way to go and steal, he makes two rakaat of salah. Oh Allah, help me in my job tonight. That's not going to work. That is, that is actually playing the fool with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Now we want to move on to some of the characteristics. You see, there is a hadith where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks of husnul khuluq, good character. And he says, myself and the one who has good character will be together in Jannah. Good character. Many of us think that Islam is only about salah and that's it, you know. Quran and I dress appropriately. I've got a nice big name that sounds very Islamic. I look like a good Muslim. I read my salah and that's it, subhanallah. And I listen to Quran in my car. So now I'm going to go to Jannah. But how do you talk to people, your family, your wife, your husband? How do you talk to your children, those whom you work with, your interaction? What type of words do you use? How much time do you spend with people? Do you smile? Do you ever smile? A smile is a charity and that charity can earn you Jannah. Did you know that? So you learn to smile, subhanAllah. The best smile comes from those who don't have teeth. Did you know that? Because it is genuine. When you have nice teeth, some people just want to show the teeth. So they smile. But imagine the older people who don't have teeth, two are missing and they smile at you without even wanting to, that, to do that, meaning they know that they don't even have anything to show you. That is genuine, legitimate. Let it be genuine. Break into a beautiful smile. My beloved brothers and sisters, may Allah grant us the ability to smile in Jannatul Firdaus. So remember that if you are to alleviate the suffering of someone in this world allah will alleviate your suffering in this world and the next if you help someone in the dunya allah will help you in this world and in the next no matter who that person is so abu huraira radiallahu anhu makes mention of a hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam wherein he said there was a man who was passing a path and he noticed a shrub 
that was growing on that particular path. And he decided, you know what? People are going to walk on this path. They are going to perhaps get hurt and injured by this shrub. Let me spend a moment to remove it. And he removed it and he threw it aside. So the, the Prophet ﷺ says, Allah loved the deed so much that he granted him entry into Jannah because he saved people. It's known as Imatatul Adha Anit Tariq. He removed harm from the path of the people. So Allah loved the deed and gave him Jannah. How many of us would stop in order to remove harm from the path? Just because someone else is going to be saved from that harm. And this would include the non-Muslims too. To protect a non-Muslim from harm is also the same act of worship. Because it is a general path. Imagine if we were to protect everyone, humanity at large, they would look at us and they would say, these are the deeds that actually earn a person Jannatul Firdaus. This is what the Muslims are taught. Let us try our best to learn what this Islam is. And once they learn, they will at least respect the deen. Today, you know, we are living it in an age where people are looking at Islam with an eye of skepticism. You know that. Whose job is it to change that? Wallahi, we all need to prove that Islam is the best faith. It teaches us from the top to the bottom, character, conduct, cleanliness, everything. Subhanallah. It, we reach out to all. I'm sure many of us seated here, if not almost all of us, somewhere up the ladder, our forefathers were not Muslim. They were not Muslim. What happened? Someone, somehow, somewhere, whether we know or we don't know, made an effort. And worked on them so they accepted islam today we are in the house of allah so in the same way you need to make an effort on other people how by being kind to them be honest be upright don't be immoral don't be cheap in your character and your conduct may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease then another way of earning jannah the hadith says and this is a beautiful hadith also in sahih al-bukhari of uthman ibn affan radiallahu anh man bana lillahi masjidan Whoever builds a masjid for the sake of Allah, Allah builds a house for him in Jannah. So you need to build a masjid for the sake of Allah and Allah will build for you a house in Jannah. Now you might be sitting here and thinking, I don't have the money, right? I don't have the money. What should I do? Well, I tell you, contribute somehow towards the building of a house because when Allah gives you, he's not just going to give you one brick. If, if there was a full masjid and one brick was mine, I'm quite certain the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me the whole house. Allahu Akbar. So contribute. Also, take pride in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you see dirt, pick it up. This is the house of Allah. You don't like dirt in your own house. Why do we put dirt in the house of Allah? When we use the, the bathroom or when we are making wudu, make sure that you leave the place clean. It's the house of Allah. Many people don't do this. They don't realize the value of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslims are guilty of having a filthy place of ablution because they think, you know what? There are workers who will clean it. My brother, would you be happy for that to happen in your own house? The answer is no. Don't do it for the house of Allah. It is a higher house than yours. Subhanallah. Today we are seated here. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. We make dua for those who've made this a reality. We have some of the most beautiful masajid on earth in this beautiful country clean lovely air conditioned lovely sound absolutely amazing facility make dua for the people but contribute positively in this house don't come and make a mess don't be a nuisance in this house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness in the dunya as well as the akhirah remember my brothers and sisters to go to the masjid is also a very very great way of earning jannah Subhanallah. The hadith says, Bashir al Masha'ina fi dhulami ila al Masajid bin Nur al Tammi yawm al Qiyamah. Give good news to those who walk to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the darkness that on the day of judgment they will have a full nur. Go to the masjid. The masjid is round the corner. You hear the adhan. We are lazy. We have no excuse, wallahi. We are living in a country every few kilometers there is a masjid. We have no excuse. What about those who, tr who drive 20, 30 kilometers every day to go and fulfill salah in other countries? They don't have the facility. Make use of it while it is there. You know what is strange? What is strange is in those countries where they are banning hijab, the sisters are fighting to wear it. 
And in those countries where it is allowed, the sisters are fighting to remove it. Subhanallah. And not only about sisters, the same applies to the masjid. In those countries where there are no masajid, they are fighting to try and get some masajid. And in those countries where there are so many masajid, they are not even going to the masajid. Look at the irony. We will be asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is going to question us that, look, I gave you the chance, the facility. What are you doing? Are you waiting for a day when it's, you are going to be in a place where that's not going to be possible? Then you're going to cry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I want to teach you another quick way of going to Jannah. After every salah, read Ayatul Kursi once. After every salah, read Ayatul Kursi once. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you Jannatul Firdaus. It is a hadith of Abu Umama radiallahu an in Sunan al Nasa'i, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whoever reads Ayatul Kursi after every Farad Salah, there is nothing between him and entering Jannah except death. Did you hear how it's worded? Whoever reads Ayatul Kursi after every Farad Salah, there is nothing between him and paradise except death. He just has to die. He will go to Jannatul Firdaus, inshallah, bithnillah. Now, when we say this, obviously, we must clarify that when a person passes away sometimes on a blessed day, say in Ramadan, say on a Friday, sometimes you have a message saying, oh, they passed away in Ramadan, they will go straight to Jannah. They passed away on a Friday, they will go straight to Jannah. There is no guarantee like that. No. If you led a good life, you will go to Jannah. But if you committed suicide in Ramadan, what's going to happen? Allah knows, let him be the judge. Subhanallah. If you did something bad, you died, for example, you were not fasting, you were drinking, you were doing something bad, and then you died in Ramadan, perhaps Allah might have mercy on you, but there is no guarantee that you will go to Jannah. Yes, it was a blessed death. We do not deny that. Someone who dies in Ramadan, it's blessed. But there is no guarantee, my brothers and sisters, because you need to try. Without the trial, it's not going to happen. This is why we said keep trying. And don't lose hope. You fell once, get up again. You fell a second time, get up a third time. And so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. Then something very important, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Salam. Remember this hadith because it is absolutely beautiful. It's a hadith also muttafaq alayhi. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came to Medina Munawwara, and I'm sure we may have heard this before. There was a Jewish rabbi. And he was later known as Abdullah ibn Salam radiallahu anhu. He says, I had read in my scriptures that there is a man going to come in this region and he will be a prophet. And I knew some of his signs. So I saw some of the signs. And when I heard that he arrived in Medina Munawwara, I went quickly rushing to see, you know, and everyone was talking to him and I, he was saying something. So I tiptoed to look at him. When I saw his face, I knew this man is not a liar. This is not the face of a liar. It's amazing, subhanAllah. And this shows us that when we lie, it shows on our face. When we are evil, it shows on the face. If you're a good person, inshallah, it will show on your face. But someone good will recognize a good person. You know, with us, sometimes we are so bad, we cannot recognize a good person. We see someone fair in complexion. We say, mashallah, look at the nur on his face. But we don't realize what nur do you have to recognize the nur? Sometimes there is a person as dark as charcoal, but their nur is such that the people who have nur will recognize, mashallah, this is a very pious person. He's a really good man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us so that we are not deceived and we don't deceive others. So the hadith says, I heard Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ayyuhan nas, afshu salam wa at'imu ta'am wa silu al-arham wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu niyam. O people, spread the salam. First word. Look, it's, it rhymes, isn't it? The words are rhyming. This was the first words that Abdullah ibn Salam heard. O people, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, O people, spread the salam. Salam means peace. So spread peace. But primarily it is the greeting. Assalamu alaikum. I, what is the meaning of assalamu alaikum? We say peace be upon you. If you look at what it actually means, it means, I promise you I will not harm you. That's what it means. Because if I say peace be on you, that means may there be no war on you, right? May there be nothing harmful on you, right? Who is, who, who is talking? I am talking. So I am the one who is telling you that I won't harm you. 
The problem with us, we say, Salaamu Alaikum, and we are beating them. Salaamu Alaikum, we are cheating. Salaamu Alaikum, we are deceiving. Salaamu Alaikum, as soon as we go back, we're backbiting about them. That is where the problem lies. I, I promise you, if you want to better the condition of your family, your broader family, and your community, and the ummah, learn to say only good things about people behind their backs. And I promise you, your life will change. Life will change. If you guarantee that you will only say good things about others behind their backs, everything will change. Community will become a better place. Because it is really, it will work. The problem with us behind the backs, we say bad. In front, we have such a smile, subhanallah, that, that hypocrisy will destroy us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may he make us from those who realize. So the first one, spread the salam. The second one, at'imu ta'ama, which means feed the food. Feed the food here. To whom? Two types of people. Those who may be wealthy and those who are poor as well. Your relatives and those who are not related. So sometimes you get your friends and you are gathering, mashallah, you have food, alhamdulillah. And inshallah, if you have cooked and prepared more, you may later on want to pack what is remaining and give it to the poor. That is an act of worship. And I'm so happy to see in so many countries, including in this country, where there are people now who are taking a keen interest in packing and distributing the good leftover food to give those who are less privileged. Wallahi, it is an act of worship. If you eat one morsel and there is another morsel remaining that you did not eat, do not throw it away. If it is good enough to eat, please pack it and look for someone who needs it. Search for him because that search will make your door to Jannah very simple. But if you are just to throw it in the bin, my brothers and sisters, you'd rather cook less. You'd rather cook less or order less. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who don't waste. So to feed the food, Learn to feed the poor as well. Learn to reach out to them. Learn to donate. Learn to give. That's what it is. When you give, Allah will give you. Anfiq. Yabna Adam mayunfaq alayk. Spend, O son of Adam, and it shall be spent upon you. Allah will grant you sustenance. One of the ways of earning more money is to put money. When you have a business, what do you need to do? You need to put capital, then you will get profit, right? If you don't have the capital, how are you going to start your business? So you need to put in something, then you will get out something. The same applies to the deeds. You need to do something, then you will get the result of it. So if you spend, it will be spent on you. Subhanallah. The same applies in the farm. You cannot just sit because you have a large tract of land and wait for the dates to grow. You didn't plant anything. How can you do that? You're foolish. Oh, I bought a dates farm. If you bought a dates farm, you are going to be working very, very hard to ensure that everything is in order. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Then, Sulul Arhama actually means to maintain your family ties. Every extended family has to have some form of politics. Remember that. It is impossible to have a big extended family without some misunderstanding. Why? Because that is part of your test from Allah. Allah made you related in order to test you. Will you actually go out and resolve the matters or you don't want to solve the problem? If you have a family problem, you have not spoken to your brother or your sister for five years. Tonight is the night. Pick up the phone, forgive each other and continue. Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us wasilul arhama from the mouth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your family members, that's your brother, that's your wife, your in-laws, your family members, your children. Some parents don't talk to their own children and they have a bad relationship. Some siblings, they are fighting. Why? We are Muslimin. If you want your path to Jannah to be made easy, solve your problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to resolve our matters. And then the last part of that hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi says, Sallu bil wa nasu niyam. Pray at night when the people are sleeping. Call out to Allah. With us, you know when we do that? When we have a problem. This is why the hadith says, Inna allaha idha ahabba abdan ibtalah. When Allah loves you, He tests you. Because when He puts a calamity and a problem in your, in your life, suddenly you become pious. Because now you quit your sin because you know you have a disease that you, you need cure for. And you suddenly go to the masjid for salah. And you are there for tahajjud and you get up very late at night and you are crying to Allah because why? The doctor told you you have four months to live. Subhanallah. Imagine. So wasn't that a gift for you? 
Wasn't that a very big gift that you had a big problem, financial problem, this problem? That was a gift. Allah blessed you with a problem so that you come closer to Allah. That was the gift of Allah. But you did not realize that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. So if we are to pray at night while everyone is sleeping, then the hadith says, what my right hand has spent. Subhanallah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my beloved brothers and sisters, that is also a beautiful way of entering Jannatul Firdaus. Another way of entering Jannah, visiting the sick and the ill, Iyadatul Marid. Imagine how many different ways there are to enter Jannah. Do we have even one of them, few of them? If there was only one way, then I think we would have been at a loss. But there are thousands of ways so that you know, it reminds me of a huge highway with so many lanes and all of them are going to Jannah. Find yourself at least in one of those lanes. So what do you do? There is a beautiful hadith, subhanallah, hadith of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu asked a question to the Sahaba. He said, who is fasting today? So the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, Ana, I. Then he says, who has followed the janazah today? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, Ana, I, subhanallah. The Sahaba were just looking. Then he says, Who has fed a poor person today? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu said, Ana, I, subhanallah. Then he asked, Who has visited a sick person today? Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu says, Ana, he says, I. All of these things. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and this is the hadith of Abu Huraira in Sahih Muslim, he says, whoever has done all of these will get Jannah. Subhanallah. Imagine visiting the sick. Why? The sick, they need a boost. They need a moral boost. Subhanallah. They need someone to at least say, Inshallah, you'll be okay. Don't worry. Mashallah, we are with you. Sometimes they are tired. They are bored. But my brothers and sisters, you need to know how long to sit. And you need to know whether to go or not. Sometimes a brother is in intensive care, fighting for his life. You say, no, Iyadatul Marid, Sunnah, it's a Sunnah, I'm going. And you fight with the people at the hospital. And you go there and you want to sit and take your tea and talk to him. My brother, relax. You need to know the right time. Some people are recuperating. Make dua for them. Wait for them to heal and come home. After that, maybe a phone call, maybe a message. See, they might not want to sit with you for so long. They need the rest. So, to apply your mind and your brain to it is very important. You need to know when to go, how long to go. The hadith also speaks of manzara akhallahu fillah. Whoever visits a brother for the sake of Allah, not necessarily sick, you visit one another. You know, the weekend comes and you decide, okay, let's go to this person's house. Now, I do know we've become materialistic sometimes. So we go and arrive at someone's house exactly at lunchtime. Why? Why did you do that? Is that really? And then you say, no, you know, I was reading the hadith and we had to come to your house. My brother, don't lie to me here. You visited at the wrong time. Subhanallah. Phone. Today we have messages, WhatsApp, so on. Are you at home? Can I come? They might have planned something. They might want to go somewhere. They may not want you there. Subhanallah. They may have decided to go out. So now you visit the house and you enter the door. And then, assalamu alaikum. So he looks at you. Alaikum salam. Yes. He doesn't even want to talk because he's waiting for you to go. You know, when I was young, we once visited someone's house with my mother. I was very young and I will never forget this. And I've said it a few times. Some of you might have heard it. On the door, there was a sticker. The sticker says, we are very happy at your arrival. Did you hear that? It sounds nice, isn't it? We are very happy at your arrival, but we will be even happier when you depart. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. When I explained to my mother what was written there, she said, I never want to go back to this house again. And I told her, no, it's just a joke. She says, no, we cannot take a joke. And we never went back there. Subhanallah. We never went back there. Now, the reality is sometimes the way we operate in our own homes, we, we make it difficult for someone to welcome us in the house. Don't overstep that hospitality, the boundary. You need to know where to draw the line. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that ease. So it's important to visit as well. Then there is a very easy way of entering Jannah, but not very easy at the same time. Where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has said in many different narrations, he speaks about how 
a person who is merciful upon the buyer when he is selling his goods and he is merciful upon the seller when he is buying his goods will be given Jannatul Firdaus. Someone wants to buy, you know what is your price, you are merciful on them. For that, inshallah, you'll get Jannah. Someone wants to sell, you know that you have the money, you won't squeeze them so much because, you know, the man bought it at 40 dirhams. He wants to make a profit, sell it at 50 dirhams. You want to squeeze him to give you at 30 dirhams and you know that he's going to make a loss. Don't do that. Give him a little bit of a profit. Bismillah, you have the money and inshallah, he will benefit. He will make dua for you. And the dua of other people is more likely to be accepted for you than your own dua. Because a more powerful dua than yours is a dua that someone makes for you without you knowing. Subhanallah. So imagine when you help someone and they made a profit in their business and their school, the, 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 the children are, are happy and so on and so forth. They are eating and he makes dua, Oh Allah, I do business with this man. Every time he does a good deed, Oh Allah, grant him Jannah, give him Barakah in his business so that he can keep on doing business with me. What a dua. And you didn't even know that. This is amazing, my beloved brothers and sisters. This is why when it comes to business deals, be merciful. Don't be selfish. Many people are taught to be selfish. How much are you going to amass? A million? A billion? What are you going to use? What are you going to spend? Subhanallah. Let's share it with others and you will earn Jannatul Firdaus by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, if a person owes you money to give them time to pay, to have mercy on them, it will have a direct effect on your ease of the day of judgment. Did you know that? If you can give someone time, say they owe you money. Yes, if you are in a difficult situation and you need it, you, you are allowed to squeeze them a little bit, obviously, because they owe you the money. Sometimes they, there is a wealthy person, he just has a habit of not paying. In that particular case, it's dangerous. You can pursue it, it's your money. But we are talking of the needy people who sometimes have borrowed money and they are finding it difficult to pay back. You have a lot of money, but you are squeezing them and squeezing them and they don't know. They are stressed and depressed. They cannot concentrate in salah. They cannot do this, cannot do that. What will happen? As a result, their life becomes stressful. Allah will make your life stressful as well. But if you make ease for them, Allah will create ease for you in the dunya as well as the akhirah. Going all the way back to the hadith of Abu Huraira in Sahih Muslim where he says there was a man who was asked, what do you do? What did you do in the dunya? In the akhirah he was asked, what did you do in the dunya? He says, you know, I just used to do a lot of uh, borrowing and I used to give so much of time to the people who used to owe me and I used to even forgive. So Allah says, today we are forgiving you. Today we are forgiving you as a result. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Like I said, there are so many other ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another hadith, Sahih Muslim of Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu an. Then I move on to the good deeds. If you are to look after your children in a proper way, to give them an upbringing, especially your daughters, and you get them married off in the correct way that Allah and His Rasul have taught you, and you have been kind to them. Allah says, as a result of that, we give you Jannah. Why? Why? Why daughters? Why not sons? The hadith says, whoever has three daughters, looks after them, and gets them married to proper places, was kind to them, we will give him Jannah. Why? Because you brought up someone and you spent money on them, you invested on them, preparing them for someone else. That's why. Did you hear that? It's not easy to give your daughter away. This is why if you have someone else's daughter and you are married, look after her. Subhanallah, be careful how you treat her. She was someone else's daughter. They spent money on her. They brought her up. They loved her. They kissed her. They played with her. She grew up for 20, 25, 30 years. Then she got married to you. Subhanallah. You make sure you treat her correctly because her father brought her up for you. That's why he's getting Jannah. Now do you see why? Because it's not easy to give the children away. And this is why when the Prophet wasallam teaches us about marriage, he tells us that these children actually belong to Allah. You will get them married according to what Allah has asked you to do. إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ 
إلا تفعلوه تكون فتنة في الأرض وفساد عريض. If a proposal comes to you for your child from someone whose deen, meaning that the level of religion and level of character is satisfactory, then let them get married. If you don't let them get married, there will be great chaos and corruption on earth. So remember, my brothers and sisters, today, if you ask me, I can tell you there are thousands of cases of people who want to get married because of the social media and technology. They have gotten to know one another somehow. And there is nothing wrong with the man or the boy or the girl. But the father says, no, what am I going to show my family? What is going to happen in my society? I can't do this. He comes from Africa and this one comes from Russia and that one comes from America and this one comes from Europe and this one comes from South Africa and whatever. Subhanallah, my brothers and sisters, go back to the hadith. Simple. Look at the level of character. Look at the level of deen. If the person is respectable, responsible, let them get married. If not, you are not doing the right thing. How then do you want Jannatul Firdaus? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Give the man a chance. Let him come. Let him talk. Let him see. And inshallah, your door of Jannah will be open because you gave your daughter away according to Allah's instruction, not according to your whims and fancies. That is why you will deserve Jannah. But if you wanted to do it in your own way, then only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. My brothers and sisters, so many other beautiful deeds that I can make mention of. One of them is to have mercy, to have mercy on one another. Those who have mercy upon one another, Allah will have mercy on them. Have mercy upon those on earth and the one in the heavens will definitely have mercy upon you. Remember that. Have mercy upon those on earth and Allah will have mercy upon you. So be merciful to people. Be kind. Develop your character. It's a beautiful month of Ramadan. Tonight we've come here to sit. Not just to say, Mashallah, I heard a good talk. Change your life. My brothers and sisters, it's enough what we are doing. The bad and the evil, it's enough. The world is struggling and suffering. Wallahi, we are waiting for improve everyone of us. so that the world can improve. If there is a problem somewhere on the globe, Allah says, Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah will not change the plight of the ummah or a nation until every individual does not change his or her self. So if you want to see an improvement across the globe, the beginning point is with myself. This is why we're here tonight to encourage everyone, please improve yourself for the sake of Allah, for your own sake. Quit your bad ways, your bad habits. Quit your haram relationships. Quit that which is bogging you down. Go into the pleasure of Allah. Bear patience for the sake of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you Jannatul Firdaus. Subhanallah. The hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, and I will end inshallah on this note where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, which are the deeds that will most likely get a person entry into Jannah? Or the proper wording of the hadith is actually the people of Jannah, the entry that they gr were granted in Jannah to Firdaus, what are the main deeds that made them get Jannah? He said two things. You know what he said? Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. The consciousness of Allah and good character. Good character. Subhanallah, which means they fulfill their duty unto Allah and they fulfill their duty unto the rest of the creatures of the same Allah. So Allah says, they will be granted Jannatul Firdaus. Most of the people in Jannah, if you ask them, what made you come here? They will say Taqwa Allah or Husnul Khuluq or both of those. Subhanallah. Did you hear that? And then the, the Prophet ﷺ was asked a question, what about Jahannam? What will be the deeds that would have got people into hellfire. If you were to ask them, subhanallah, that why are you here? They would say one of two things, al-famu wal-farju. Two things, the mouth or the private parts. May Allah forgive us. The mouth or the private parts, which means hellfire will be filled with people who abuse their mouth and their private parts. Now this mouth abuse is more dangerous because it affects people. Watch out how you use your tongue. And I call on you and I plead with you. 
Let's improve the condition of our homes because if your home is strong, the community will be strong. Go back home and solve your problem. Say good words to your spouse. The hadith speaks about how a person who passes away with their spouse being happy with them will enter Jannah. That's also there in the hadith. We usually talk about the wives, but subhanallah, that does not give a license to the husbands to be bad. I'm the man. Come on. That's not how you should be. The house is beautiful. Khayrukum, khayrukum li ahlihi. The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. I challenge you to ask yourself, am I the best? Am I good to my wife, to my family members? Go and improve. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed favor upon us. There are thousands of ways of entering Jannatul Firdaus. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, مَن يَضْمَلْ لِي مَا بَيْنَ لِحْيَيْهِ وَمَا بَيْنَ فَخِذَيْهِ أَضْمَلْ لَهُ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever guarantees me the correct use of what lies between his cheeks and what lies between his thighs, which means the tongue and the private parts, I guarantee him Jannatul Firdaus. Now I know many people must be saying, you know, I made a mistake. I did this. I committed this sin. I didn't use my tongue properly. What should I do now? I end off by saying, turn to Allah. Remember, a person who seeks the forgiveness of Allah is equivalent to the one who did not commit a sin at all. If you asked Allah's forgiveness, Allah wiped it out. Because that was Allah's plan. You know, when Allah created Adam alayhi salatu was salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his divine wisdom knew that he's going to commit a sin he will seek forgiveness, then I will put him on earth so that his progeny, when they commit a sin, they need to know what to do. What should they do? They should seek forgiveness, then I will give them Jannah again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannah to Firdaus. Indeed, it was a beautiful evening here in Dubai. I ask Allah to accept it from every one of us. Please remember me also in your prayers. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.